Okay, are we ready? Okay, it's 7 o'clock, um, May 8th. Call this uh, meeting of the Yellow Springs Planning Commission to order. Mm -hmm. Judy, was that called <coughs> roll, please? Yes. Reed? Here. Sims? Here. Stiles? Here. Pelzell? Here. And here for Adam Abraham is Chris Rubukin? Here. Also present is Village Solicitor Jessica Brockman and Village Planner Denise Swinger. And at the witch clerk. Uh, next item on the agenda is uh, the roll call, or roll call, the uh, review of the agenda. We have an agenda before us. Um, anyone have any additions, deletions, changes? Well, we, we should add voting on the vice chair. I, I think we're okay leaving it as is, but we, we can. <laughs> If we have time. <laughs> but it Are you end. trying to step down as vice chair? Well, He's trying to draft you, Rose. You need to vote on process. Oh, okay. And I thought maybe you might want to. If you do decide that you want to, you know, have a, have a race, that <laughs> there will need to be a nomination this time and a vote the next time. So. Okay. I have a few things, but I don't want to do it. Okay. Mm -hmm. You want to tackle that then? Yeah. Okay. Okay. The next item is review of the minutes. Uh, we have minutes in front of us from the April 10th meeting. Does anyone have any comments, changes on page one? I do. I have a question. What does fruitful attendance mean? Her attendance was fruitful and beneficial to her. That is what I meant by it. Chris, would you say that was an accurate reporting of your attendance? It was beneficial. Experience? Your Excellent. attendance. Okay. 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 I, would, I thought it was like the attendance, there were many people there. I, I didn't understand. There were. <laughs> okay. Thank you. That was it. Okay. How about page two? Page three. Well, I just caught something which is an incomplete sentence at the top of the page, and I will just complete that to mean something rather than nothing. Uh, I'll have to go back over the uh, DVD just to make sure of that, but I'll, I'll make that correction. On page three? Yeah. Yes, at the top. The 5,000 population mark? Yes, is an important... Huh? Oh, just put is important. Oh, oh yeah. Um, um, yeah, delete the yeah, yeah, and. Just delete the and. Okay. Thank you. Okay, how about page four? <coughs> page five. Uh, if there's no changes, we have a motion to accept these minutes as amended. So move. Second. Aye. All in favor? Aye. 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 All abstain. I wasn't here, neither was Rose. Okay, so. Okay. Uh, next item on our list is communications. We have two communications. We have a communication regarding the uh, Mike <coughs> subdivision on Dayton Street, and we have a communication regarding the noise from the millworks. Um, we're going to address this. Uh, um, minor subdivision later in the agenda, so are the, uh, are the busters here? Um, if you like, we're going to have an open uh, uh, hearing, and um, if you like, you can come forward and address uh, whatever is in here as well, um, up here at the mic when we do have that hearing. 
And then the other uh, um, is regarding noise. And um, I know there's very little in the zoning code that talks about noise. Um, in fact, hardly anything. Um, and so it's not really a, a specifically a planning commission item. And I think that was probably voiced last meeting. But this is another one of those things that, um, I mean, I, I think we need to be cognizant of with respect to when we start increasing density, we start looking at uh, mixed use, we start adding accessory dwellings. Um, um, this kind of thing is something that I think we need to figure out a way maybe to address it head on um, or maybe give council some guidance from our part uh, because this is one of those things that could kind of fester and get out of control if we're not aware kind of catch it now and, and, and figure out. Uh, and the other thing I thought about was just um, um, people with solar versus density in houses and blocking panels with shade. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's just a lot of issues like that, that that are just secondary consequences of our density ideas and trying to do infill. Mm -hmm. Well, this seems like a a problem that has always been possible in this location. Yeah. It's just now being used in a way that creates this problem. It's not a n density problem. It's a use being fulfilled problem. Right. Mm -hmm. right. Absolutely. Yeah, I mean, no one's doing anything like illegal. I don't yeah. Think. I mean, I, and I know that I mean, Denise is engaged and uh, the police have been out there measuring sound levels and all that stuff. Oh, too, okay. so. well, yeah, they haven't completed that yet. So. Okay. But that's in process, so it's not like this is being ignored. It de that's good. It definitely seems like um, this is a, a, a good issue for us to look at when, when zones intersect in this way and right. there are issues. It's, right. it's mentioned well, only in one place in the zoning code where it talks about um, in the general provisions um, every use shall be conducted and operated in a way that does not create a nuisance that's not dangerous by reason of heat, glare, fumes, odor, dust, noise, or vibration beyond the lot on which it is located. So that's the only thing that's it, it, in the zoning code. And for clarity, we're talking about the millworks property and um, compress compressor noise uh, constantly that for residents that live nearby. Right. We, are, we, we had this issue years ago with the old Vernay plant. That was Vernay's plant on Dayton Yellow Springs. Uh, yes. Because behind it was Omar Circle and the residents there. Mm -hmm. I don't I don't remember now how that was resolved. I, we also had it with the Antioch College. I was about to yeah. say, also at the College. Student Union building. Yeah, and I, and I think so maybe that's why it got in the zoning code. Yeah, because with the, with the small community and the way we're set up, it's, uh, now we don't have as many uh, factories and that we had before, but Millworks at one time was the old uh, the sawmill, and I think there was a uh, lumber yard and, and so forth. So, but uh, I I did notice that when I I was out there at about uh, six o'clock in the uh, the uh, <coughs> Vehicle traffic uh, to me was louder because you got that little uh, ingrade when you go under the uh, bike path. Uh, people do have to kind of step under, they don't have to, but they do step on the gas a little bit to go up that grade. And, uh, and I heard a lot of car noise that ground that uh, grounded out the uh, condenser, but I do plan on going out about about 12 or 1 tonight and see what I hear, you know, when it's a lot quieter. And, and the so police department wants to do that as well. They, yeah. want, to, they want to take readings at night. Um, they tried the uh, week before last and there were high winds and they didn't get an accurate reading, but also they, um, I, you know, we've heard from Millworks as well. I've heard from Wyeth Brewery. I mean, they, I think that at least those two groups really want to try to resolve this in the best of interest of everyone right. so i think at this point it's a staff uh, issue and 
perhaps under agenda planning we can maybe bring it back at least for a report if not what she's requesting right. that sounds good thank you yeah i thought it was a, more of a staff issue at first yeah. and then report back to us what you what you found so forth denise where was it that uh, was uh, referring to noise uh, it's in the general provisions 126005a thank you Okay, next item is council report. Uh, I don't, Judy, correct me if, if, if I'm wrong. I, I just don't remember much that related to, to planning at the well, last, last year. Was uh, something that I missed? It seemed like maybe, I guess I wasn't at the last planning commission meeting you guys already discussed the things that had come to council previously. When are those coming back up on the council uh, calendar that we should be aware of? They're not not, in, not until no. you right. until we talk about it again. Right. Right. Okay. Yeah. yeah. yeah okay. Really Sounds good. And that was the pocket big neighborhood. Right. And then uh, there was a the question of short term rental. Short -term yeah, short -term rental. Short -term rental. yeah right. because we were trying to finalize pocket neighborhood development, there was just so much on this agenda. I'm putting short term rentals on the agenda for next month. Okay. okay. That's what, that's what I thought you wanted. So yeah. you'll let us know because you were interested in some of us going to the. Yes, and meeting. right now we, we have to, it has to come back to you um, to discuss. Um, Matt and I both met with two council people. Okay. And and we want to give it its due diligence, and we have so much on this agenda. Yeah, I decided to wait sure. till next month. Okay. Okay. Um, next item is citizens comments. This is the item on the agenda. If anyone here has a um, anything to address planning commission with, that's not on the uh, on the agenda. Uh, some other item. This is an opportunity. Uh, if there's. Uh, if you're interested in one of the public hearings, there'll be a time for that um, uh, during those hearings. So if there's anything else extraneous, uh, now's an opportunity. Um, if not, we'll push on and we'll go to the public hearings. The first public hearing is regarding a minor subdivision application for 745 Dayton Street. Um, Denise, do you want to lead us through your assessment? Yes, um, Micah David uh, is the property owner. He uh, purchased the property, uh, which is a two-family dwelling. Um, he wasn't aware that a two-family dwelling is no longer uh, a use, a conditional use in the um, in the residential A. So it's a non-conforming structure. Um, uh, he's not allowed to expand the structure's footprint, um, so he asked about the possibility of an accessory dwelling unit, um, but accessory dwelling units are only allowed on lots that have uh, single family dwellings. So due to the size of the lot, he then submitted an application to make his one lot into two lots following the lot area requirements under residential A. Uh, because this lot is accessed by an easement to Dayton Street, um, where I wanted to make sure that we exercised due diligence and made sure it was noticed in the news, and there was a public hearing notice that went out to all pro abutting property owners, and a sign was put up at the property. <coughs> uh, this is something that's typically not required in the minor subdivision, but we wanted to go a little bit further with that. Um, the applicant is, in, uh, is intending to build a single-family dwelling dwelling on this proposed new lot. What makes this lot interesting is that it had been uh, subdivided through a replat process um, back in 1988. Um, it started with five lots and then it ended with five lots that remained after the replat. Um, the plat was named the Dayton Street plat and those lots were then identified as one, two, three, four, and five. You'll see in your packet that there is a utility and vehic vehicle access from Dayton Street to this lot five. Um, the person who owned the land also put into the easement um, restrictions on 
not being able to further subdivide lot three or four, but did leave five, lot five out of that, the property owner. That's in the deed. Yeah, okay. that's in the Dayton Street plat. It's under your exhibit B. Uh, with um, lot five having vehicle and utility, and utility easement on lot four from lot five to Dayton Street. Um, I talked with uh, Green County's uh, engineer about uh, in typically in a in a property like this where it was replatted as five there they you normally would have to do a replat before you do the subdivision but um, he was feeling that you know he, he said that that often different municipalities do not do that. Uh, actually, at the time that this was subdivided, it was um, it was subdivided as a replat. But in order to create these two lots, lot three and lot four, so uh, an actual um, full subdivision wasn't um, was not initiated because I think at that time it might have been no more than uh, three, which now it's like no more than five. So that's why we're going to be creating. Uh, so basically, it's like they did a minor subdivision with a flat, with a replat. They they did move some lines mm -hmm. and um, created these two new lots, but did not actually. They what they started with is what they ended up with. If that makes sense. In terms of number of lots. In terms of number of lots. So they, they started with five and they ended with five. Right. Okay. okay. Now the request before us will we now have six. Mm -hmm. Right, yes. Okay. Mm -hmm. So dividing lot five into two will give us six. Right. Okay. And then as I read in exhibit B, it, it states that uh, Existing utilities on lot four will serve for lot five. Mm -hmm. Now, if we go to lot six. The way that it's been surveyed is still under the same property owner, and the surveyor made it lot five, track one, lot five, track, track two. two. Okay. And the easement from Dayton Street extends all the way to the end of uh, south end of lot five? Yes. Okay. So I have a question about the utilities, I guess. So they are there in that right away area. Is that correct? The easement. Um, the easement. The easement. I didn't, we, didn't, we did not do a locator as to exactly where they are. I, I'm assuming that they are. So yes. would anything new have to be put in, or are they simply tapping into what's existing? Yeah, the village has, yeah, it, it's, it's completely up to the property owner to extend the laterals. Okay. So if he decides to, once it, if it gets his lot split, he decides to build a house on that, he's responsible for running the laterals to where our main is and then we tap in there, which would be in the street. Okay, so, so it would go from Dayton Street? Yes. All the way to? His house, yeah. Okay. And then where's the meter? It'd be on his house. Track two. Well, we know it'd be the five. south yeah, side of track five. Yeah, he already has laterals for the for the uh, duplex. duplex. That's on track one, right? No, no. on five. On five. Number five. Well, lot yeah, five but they're both one. five. Yes. One and yeah, track one. Y'all, sir. Yeah, You're right. track two. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what I wasn't clear on. So but they actually have but, to. But we we require language on that um, that plot of survey that you have to br bring your laterals for each of your individual lots. So in other words, he can't tap into an exi his existing lateral. Okay. And it runs, comes in all the way from Dayton Street to the property, to the dwelling? So it's not like there's a line that runs along the easement and they tap into that. I, I thought that the utility line would be running along the easement and then any additional homes would be tapping into that. 
So it has to come off of Dayton Street. Mm -hmm. It has to come off of Dayton Street. Mm -hmm. And so uh, I think there's already a, a Vectron line there. Was would have been called DPNL then? There's a gas line that goes all the way across. Whether those whether those uh, water lines from uh, Lot Five are in that area or not, I don't know. We didn't do a. Uh, it's not really up to the village to do an oops, but. Um, and by the time I actually thought about maybe doing it, it was really kind of too late because they need 72 hours to be, mm. a, a, to be able to mark it. But that's not really, it's not really the village's issue, it's going to be the property owner's issue. So one of the issues I know in their letter, and probably we'll talk about it later, but so if this owner, if this property is divided, they build a house, they would be responsible for um, Putting the dry everything back the way that it was. Absolutely. Okay. Yep. Okay. Any more questions for Denise? If not, we'll want we'll to hear from the applicant. Do you have anything you want to add? Would you like to do that? Absolutely. Yes. You need to uh, introduce uh, yourself. Identify yourself for the folks on television. There's a big okay. audience out there. Uh, my name is Micah David, and um, with the Hashimoto Project Foundation, which is an outgrowth of my doctoral dissertation at Antioch University, and. Um, one of the things that we're trying to do is uh, rehab properties in, in the area and uh, also give employment opportunities to, uh, to students uh, to help do that. Um, it's not the sole purpose. We also intend to generate money from, from rent for the organization, um, which is, has 501c3 nonprofit status. Um, we really just... Uh, wanted to make ample use of the of the land and um, have a you know have another dwelling and we wanted to find the, the legal way to do that and uh, the lot split seemed like the <laughs> really the only way to do it um, and as as Denise said um, obviously uh, any disturbance to an easement or anything like that would would be on us to take care of um, I would never in a million years expect anyone else to, uh, you know, to pay for uh, that being put back or anything like that. And from what I can tell from uh, the straightforward uh, wording of the, the easement, um, uh, it seems like Lot 5 is open for uh, being further subdivided in, in the language of the easement. Um, and so that's why we uh, request your consideration of that. Thanks. Any questions for... Micah? Um, the house that's on lot five right now, it's accessed via the easement, correct? Yes. Uh, my understanding is that, um, that that's the oldest property on the, you know, in that whole area, and that when they uh, divided it for the Dayton Street plat, um, as you said, they, they sort of redrew different lines and everything. And um, so it already has two driveway access um, points from the easement, and uh, I don't think we would need to even expand that. Uh, we might just move one driveway over a little bit or something. Yeah, actually, in the code, you wouldn't be allowed to have a third one anyway. Yeah. Yeah. It would be yeah. silly. Anyway, so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Anyone else? Okay, thanks. Thank you. Any more questions for... Denise, any discussion? Um, if not, um, I'll open the public hearing. So public hearing is if you have uh, a, uh, any comments, questions, opinions about this matter, um, come forward, identify yourself, and, uh, and give it a go. And uh, um, My name is Charles Buster. Um, I live at 759 Dayton Street, and the um, the easement uh, for for uh, that we we're talking about for Lot Five um, exists on my property. Okay, I am concerned about a liability and a utility issue. Those are my primary concerns. Um, <clears throat> I have a 40-foot easement. Or excuse me, 40, my property is 40 foot wide. I have 40 foot of frontage. Presently, in the letter that I that I provided to um, uh, to the planning commission, it states that presently we have uh, my 
water line, sewer. Um, the water and sewer line from uh, from Route 5, that is, uh, that's historical, I guess, uh, exists. Water, sewer, and perhaps gas. Um, my concern, of course, is the density of uh, of the sewer lines that would be put in, and sewer and utility lines and water lines that would be put in place um, <clears throat> when, when that lot, uh, the additional lot is developed. And what are you guys are calling it? It's not lot six? Should that not be lot six? It's lot five, but we're calling it track one and track two. Why is that? Why is that track one and track two? It's the way the surveyor named it. Yeah, this, on, on this, on the Sorry. surveyor and on here, mm -hmm. yes, there's this is lot five, this is tract one and tract two. Okay. If if that, what? How would you like to call it? I think it should be lot six. Um, this is going to be lot six. It should be because um, it's a residence A. Yeah. If it exists. And it's, and it, yes. If it exists. <laughs> yeah. Correct. Um, Potentially lot six. Potentially. Uh, I've asked the village, uh, i.e. county, health department, whomever. I think it's important that we identify where these, lot, where these utility lines are for safety and for health. Um, when I first built the land, or first built our home on lot, uh, lot four, um, you were not allowed to have um, existing you couldn't have two lines in one hole. Mm -hmm. I understand that's changed. I don't know that. Um, I've got to believe that there is a density requirement that uh, the health department or county engineering, someone has to probably has somewhere um, what, how much <clears throat> space needs to be between, between um, utility lines. Um, and I would like for, uh, I've asked for an impact study um, for the village, county, engineers, or health departments to locate and mark the existing, and I think it benefits both parties, mm -hmm. but, uh, but I've asked them to locate, mark existing water, gas, and sewage lines from 745, uh, to locate, mark um, existing water, sewage lines of uh, 759, um, to perform an impact study of the existing underground infrastructure to examine and determine the impact of the impending subdivision. Um, and there's also a, uh, what we haven't talked about is a five foot easement for the gas line that is, exists along that property. Um, it's, I'm assuming DP, it's a DPNL slash Vectron line. Um, to my knowledge, it does not exist. It's just an easement. Oh. Yes, I presently, I have a geothermal closed loop system um, servicing my home. I don't have gas back there. I receive electricity from Wright Street at my house, but I do have water and sewage running forward all the way to Dayton Street. You know, 40 foot is not very wide. I think that's like, I would say maybe this room's probably 30 foot long. So about 10 feet beyond it, and I don't think it's unreasonable. Um, uh, I don't believe my request is unreasonable at this time to uh, to identify those those items. Um, let's see. One of my other concerns, of course, is the liability. My liability. We briefly talked about it, but what is my liability? in case there's a break along in these existing lines. If um, the line, for example, um, 745, the, exist, the structure on 745 is the oldest structure of those three lots. Um, the existing home, which I think is, was Mrs. Perry's home, um, and I, it, none of these are numbered, but perhaps in the package it's numbered, so it'd be lot two, mm -hmm. um, is the oldest structure um, in that configuration. But those 
um, utility lines at uh, for that service lot four or lot five are probably clay. Um, mm -hmm. And I don't know what the gas line is. I'm sure it has to be solid if gas goes there. And the water line is probably a solid line. So if there's a break in the in either of those, um, or in, uh, so if there's a break there, um, who's liable? I checked with my insurance company. They said they're not liable. You know, from the meter back to the property typically is how that's governed. Right. Mm -hmm. In this particular case, because we have easements and we don't have frontage issues with the new lot or with lot 745, which will both be um, uh, landlocked, I might add. Um, so if there is a break, who's responsible for those? Well, and here's a, let me just ask a question. On the street side of the meter, isn't that the village's responsibility? Yes. Yes. But this, so it sounds like the village is responsible. No, no, mm -mm. no, no. I'm talking about from 745 to the street. Okay. It's on my property. What, li the what liability the do I have? The lines that would be in there now would be the lines from lot three and lot four. You guys have got it there. Okay. okay. Which those, those two properties were built in like 1991. So. Regardless, but if his meter is at his house and the village owns as everything the, up to the meter or as the easement to run the line up isn't that the meter. village's responsibility the village it's only the laterals it's that is the no. individual owner's responsibility so, so, so the, la the, the, la street. the lateral from Dayton street to to their property is their responsibility for yes is regardless of what the meter is yes well, I mean, wherever the meter pit is, I mean, where, where is he saying? I mean, you may have a meter on your house. He's saying, okay, so the there's a junction at Dayton Street. The line goes down, let's say. There's a tap in at five. He's and then it all it continues down. The line and, it, and he's line. tapped it's in a separate line. line. Okay, separate line. Separate. that's what I had asked to be separate. Separate. Okay, so if it's a separate line, I guess he's saying. If the if it goes down and it goes to five and it breaks between Dayton Street and hi, and five's meter, it's on his property. Is he yes. responsible for fixing it if it's on the easement? They're not connected. I mean, everybody has their own meter. I so, would think it would have to be the person no. whose no, line it is. Yeah. Talking about the line. Yeah. 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 So no, it wouldn't be your responsibility. That's what our lawyers. I mean, I don't know for sure, but if I had to guess, I would think it would have. Would the utility be. companies um, be more definitive in that response? Or, well, you know, the village is that? the water utility. Oh, okay. and, and, and the wastewater. Right? Yeah. And, 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 and electricity. And they, yeah, and they, and they indicated that, that you know, it, it's not. I mean, it, it's the property owner's responsibility for their own laterals. Yes. So would any utilities be branching after Dayton Street, like connected at any point for for all three properties if if we grant this that no. would be no. they, they would all be separate. There would be no separate, lines. Okay. Is there space along this what looks like a fifty foot easement? It's forty actually. On the pla on the survey it says 50 and the survey says 50 but it's actually 40 okay because I have 40 and my neighbor the owner of lot 3 has a 40 foot frontage yeah. ha, where do you on your on your plat at Dayton Street where do you see that though where does it say that Rose if you look at this one oh. at the replat Here's, here's his property, yeah. and that's the neighbor. Yeah. yeah. And so they share the driveway that's on his property. Excuse me. <laughs> so is the 50 foot, the 40 foot is right here. But where does it say 40 feet? On your, on the map? It's on the smaller one. Here. Nope. Huh. That's interesting. And and there. What so is the this is his survey say? But who made this? This was in the 1990 uh, when they oh, okay. 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 Well, huh. that says 50, doesn't it? So what accounts for that difference? I don't know. 
do because this see this is dated uh, uh, yeah, the green county surveyor's record says 50. unless that includes okay. an For easement some reason. I'm I have happy a, with that. I gained some. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, I think it, what it looks like to me is that the oh, you know easement what? is 50 foot, but it actually goes 10 feet over from your cent, from yes. the property line. Onto, it goes on the parcel three. Onto Ms. Cobb's property. Which is onto yeah. Ms. Cobb's three. property, <laughs> yeah. However, there are two very large <coughs> trees right along that western property line. Okay, yeah. So it, I, it's unusual. Yeah. Um, is lot three also accessed by the easement on your property? Um, lot three has uh, ingress and egress uh, on my property, mm -hmm. out of that driveway. But separate utilities. Separate utilities. The utilities are maybe on the other side of... Yes, they are. They're maybe not on the easement at all. Correct. Okay. They are not. That was my question. Oh, so number okay. three property, they're... Uh, utility lines go on there going out to Dayton Street yes okay is Denise is there a requirement for a s specific space between one sewer electric line from one to another there is I'm sure that there is and it's not um, it's not a requirement of, a, of doing the split itself for the minor subdivision that comes later at the time if the person decides to develop it. So this this subdivision is allowed in the zone that it's in. It's big enough. Yes. Is that correct? Yeah. Easily. Yeah. The problem is the access easement. If if there is a problem. There's no problem with no, access. No, no problem. It's the utilities. If I, if I understand, the, the, to me the the issue is with the increased traffic for the new lot okay uh, mr buster's concern is that if there's damage done either through a water main break or a sewer line break due to additional traffic it, it sounds like from what I'm hearing that if you're if if your lines broke you wanted to know who's going to be responsible That's or or are you assuming that you are going to be responsible and your concern is the depth of those lines sufficient to accommodate the addition of usage partly I, I I understand that my lines serving lot four are my responsibility mm -hmm. i'm concerned with the density because we have a duplex on lot five mm -hmm. and now we're adding a third set of lines right. running down from that property to the street mm -hmm. my concern is that density of those utility lines whether they're too dense and secondly um, the liability that I'm faced with right yeah um, as a result and um, uh, and the health you know I think for health and safety I would have to believe that that the uh, that the engineering county engineering has I would oh, yeah. think some oh yeah definitely they they put a water line in front of my house on an easement recently mm -hmm. and they you know there there are regulations between how close those lines can be to you know yeah and they they wouldn't let him do anything that would impact you negatively I don't think well no. one thing that I tried to locate I tried to locate the um, and the reason I've asked for the village to locate the property the utility lines for a lot five is that I could not see where the, uh, the utility lines for the existing structure came out to Dayton Street. I have at um, about five feet from the sidewalk at my frontage, I have a meter, a water meter. I don't see a similar water meter for mm -hmm. lot, uh, lot five. Mm -hmm. And again, I don't know um, where 
I don't know where the sewer line is. Do you, so those do you know where the water meter is? My understanding is that all of the utilities run, right here in the backyard, everything seems to come off and then go, uh, I mean, I could be mistaken, but it, but it looks like uh, the water meter, the electric meter, everything's back there in the, in the back corner. And it, it actually doesn't go in the easement at all. I can say for sure, but I don't, I don't go think to right it street? It all seems to go to right our, street. Uh, I don't know if it's through, through right street. Actually, I was really interested in that property, but it's not up, it, up for sale yet, uh, right behind it. I think it goes uh, through the trees to Dayton Street from that um, property that's right Mr. So, Perry, Mr. Perry's property. Is, is, it on the, yeah. is it on the east side of the other duplex? Mm -hmm. It must be. Yeah. I'm not sure which side is this way. <laughs> east is this way. West is that way. West is North that way. is that way. Okay. okay, so yeah. So east, uh, and then I think it, it goes then north through uh, Mr. Perry's. I, I spoke with the, the lady who was there. I didn't speak with the Okay. Now, well, let me ask That's a question, question of Denise. Uh, Given Mr. Buster's concerns, would this be something that we would normally do, or is this something over and above? Yeah, this is not something we would normally do. No. If, if, uh, if, you know, you can subdivide something, and later on, he, the owner may find out that it's something he can't do. I okay, mean, but <laughs> and then that would kind of fall on. But there's, I mean, he would have to, he would have to have someone who would say, okay, well, maybe you could get an easement on the person. That the Perry to maybe go through their yard. Okay, uh, so, but those are issues we can't contemplate until he he actually decides to build a new structure to do something, yes. and then do something. And then at that point, that would be in the building code, right? right. At that point, yeah. Green County Building Code. Yeah. Although there is existing, there presently is existing utilities, and that's just existing. On, well, yes, it's true. Yeah. But to my knowledge, it's on my it's on my driveway. It's in, within that 40 feet. But it's a utility easement. Yes, it is. I still need to know the density. Yeah, so I'm all, I think mm -hmm. what we're saying is that even if it's subdivided, if he decides to build, he, there needs to be an evaluation of the density of those utilities. So and they'll be evaluated it, at that time. Right. And, okay. yeah, and, and nice. there's sounds like there's hard and fast rules about the, that density that you have to meet. And yeah. So and that would be something that, that, is a risk that, that he needs. would have to pay for to be able to give the building department the information that they need to either approve or disapprove a permit to put those utilities in am i correct here that's that what, that's yeah. i asked our utility i asked our water and electric person and he said yes. yeah that's so, not something that the village does so, right. the, village. so the risk would be on uh, david on mr. david mm, yes it's not on mr buster because because it sounds because like at some Mr. point Buster. they could find out, okay, if it is in the street there, then your only alternative is to maybe see if you can get a neighbor to sell you right. an easement. You're going right. to have to locate him somewhere else, or you can't right. do it. But Mr. Buster doesn't have to do anything now. I mean, it, or, it's, then. Or, or then, because it sounds like he's already covered. Yes. It's the new the new owner well, I, where all the risk is. I, yes. How does, that, how does that apply then to the existing, if, for example, and, and I don't know, but if... For example, their utilities run down the driveway, and they don't run behind um, uh, Mr. Kingsley mm -hmm. Perry's property. Um, does you know there's still a, a liability issue there if that's where they are? Typically, right. the village will provide. I thought, and um, if someone had uh, was digging a an electric trench somewhere on their property, the village would mm -hmm. come out and identify where those lines are with, uh, with spray paint. They come out and spray paint the lines, et cetera, et cetera. So uh, I don't think we're asking for anything more than that. Right, and that's typically done at that point right before construction phase. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. But even before that, those will yeah. have to be identified because yeah. of that density question. If right. there's six lines there or nine lines there instead of six, then that's going to impact how you can right. construct on that so does parcel. the village have that information how would the village go about i mean like when when the village does those things 
when they get when they get that oops report, then the water guy would go out and mark where the water lines are. The sewer would mark where the sewer lines are. Okay. You should have that information. Yeah. Well, is that public information? Those oh, maps? Yeah. 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 So you could look up the public information, and and probably, like, request I someone mean, he, to come he, out, he, right? He, that property, that driveway, is under Mr. Buster's um, is considered part of Mr. Buster's property. So, so we could, don't have maps he, of that. No, I'm saying he could call and ask for that. Oops. Who, who would I call this? Um, Ohio U Utility Protection Services. You got, that's oops. Yes. <laughs> I know an appropriate term. <laughs> and, Ohio um, Utility. So they're trying to avoid yeah. protection services. Protection services. And they um, they will come out and flag blue is for water and yeah. I don't know red is for electric. Yeah. Yeah. There's about three different, yeah. yeah, different colors. Yeah. And you can see the they'll put little flags on where the where these lines in, are in sewer. And what they basically do is then they send out a a, a notification to all different utilities, cable companies. Uh, they'll send one out to Vector and they'll send one out to our departments, and then and then our departments have to go out and mark those. I have another question, um, and, and it's centered around, it's about legal, is there a legal solution to this? In other words, um, is it too late to include um, on our, our deeds, I, uh, the deed for, um, for this uh, lot six, I'm going to call it lot six, mm -hmm. um, where we could uh, note that the responsibility of uh, the utility lines, not just not just um, the placement of those utility lines, but the responsibility from the street to their um, to his property is his responsibility um, if he is in an easement. You know, if that if if I'm making any sense here. But they would be there. That would be automatic because those um, lines are his lines. Okay. Um, they. You know, if your lines, if it's their line that's broken, it w you would not be responsible for that. Okay, even 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 the fact that it's on on yeah. my on my road. Yeah. 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 Okay. Right. All right. I was thinking of a letter of agreement, yeah. you know, between the two parties as well. So it's, 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 well I mean, if you yeah. feel comfortable yeah. and he's willing, there's no reason why you can't draw. mutually draw something up like that. Right. And, um, it doesn't really need to be attached to the deed. I think it's understood as part of the easement. No. The, but you could, you know, you could record it at the county recorder's office, the same place, that, you know. Any, yeah. If, if I could um, interject. Can you uh, get up? Uh, uh, sure. Sorry. I'm sorry. Um, I'm sorry. Well, that's okay. No, stay you there. Stay up. That's <laughs> Uh, I but the first thing I did after I first spoke with um, actually with Alex because I, I taught him Tai Chi for a while and he builds around here and he said to speak with you um, he said uh, call you know talk to you and talk to Green County and so I talked to AJ at Green County and that's why I wasn't re really worried I didn't have these same concerns because AJ at Green County already told me much of what you're saying that uh, like, for instance, there's already the lines going through there. So if something happens to 745's lines right now, it's it's still on me. It's still on, you know. So adding a new one, that wouldn't change it any. So the, I, I wouldn't put a burden on him, you know, and uh, I'm happy to for us to draw up some, you know, neighborly agreement and, you know, separate from this, you know, separate from the deeds or whatever. Uh, but but just, you know, to, to put him at ease, to put them at ease. I'm happy to do that. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Anybody else have anything to say about this? Okay. I'm Carol Cobbs. I own the um, lot across from uh, number three where he bought. And um, this is my little brother. So we have some <laughs> few disagreements, but he understands things much better than I do, and he's explained things several times, but there's a long history here. I am also a Perry, very proud, and we, 20 years ago maybe now, went through, I guess it's all right to say hell, to be able to build <laughs> back there because it was landlocked. and. We were the only ones that were allowed to build back there because it was family, and that's all Aunt Betty wanted. We had to have frontage, which 
she decided to give us the extra land down to the street, which is very nice of her. And the village then gave us an agreement that we would only need 40 feet frontage instead of 50 feet. I'm still trying to figure out why he doesn't have to have frontage. It just perplexes me that now all the rules have changed. Um, perhaps you can just explain that. And then I have a second question, because I know you have the 10 days and all that, but I think he may have had a lot more time than I have and the swinger. And in case I want to pursue this a little further, get somebody with some legal ex uh, expertise, just so I know all my T's are crossed and my dots, uh, because I'm, I'm not happy about it. I will be honest about that, not at all, because I know what my Aunt Betty's intent was. So I don't know if one is allowed to ask for more time so they could, you know, bring somebody in that might be able to sit me down and say, well, that's the way it is because that's the way it is. But I do have, have questions understanding that frontage, that all of a sudden one doesn't need frontage in town to build a home. Can, can you, well, I think they're looking at that now. Mm -hmm. Um, it says minimum lot frontage. Any lot created after the effective date of this code shall have frontage on an improved public street or approved private street or access easement equal to the minimum required lot width in the zoning district in which it is located. And legal interpreted that to be the frontage that is on the easement. And um, that property does have like 75 feet, 70 to 75 feet on each of those lots. That's kind of how the way I read it is once we, we the easement was done to allow uh, three and four to have frontage that also allowed the rest of them to have frontage. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this this lot five got frontage the same way that your lots got frontage. And my so lot got frontage by going straight to the street. Yes, mm -hmm. but that easement, that access easement, that was in addition to getting that frontage, because it's a 50-foot easement and your frontage is 40, um, it, it sort of, it, it leaked over that, what you, you know, what you got, this other lot also got access to. I thought the, my understanding, which may be incorrect, was that that gave us access to our driveways, which my brother allowed me yeah. uh, to do, as he allowed Patty, Patsy, my cousin, which always had that. So um, uh, that, that's not the same as frontage. Her property's been there 50-some years, her little place. Mm -hmm. So that would have been probably before a lot of rules were set. Just, just so something that I need answered. And, and, and really, that easement was part of the same subdivision that allowed your parcel and your brother parcel to be buildable. That easement extended mm -hmm. all the way back through to the south end of that lot, that lot five. And that's what he is using. And that's right. part of the same legal document that, that put together the replat that allowed your parcel and your brothers to be buildable. Yeah, you have what, 187 plus, you have lots of frontage on the easement, your so, property. So, so and, you know, so, like you're on this side of the easement, mm -hmm. and he's on this side of the easement, and you do act, you are, you know, frontage on Dayton Street, mm -hmm. but it's the frontage on the easement that is important. Does that make sense? That the Not easement <laughs> is kind of, it's Dayton Street in, in, a, in a kind of offhanded way. And the engineer agreed with that, right? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Well, like I said, I, I need someone to... So, I really so need what's with what's some legal expertise? What's to our thoughts on for me? postponing a decision on this? Um, well, I I think legally everything is there. 
that wouldn't well no, it wouldn't prohibit me from approving. Yeah. Uh, Does she have any courses on appeals? Because all we're approving is the yeah. lot yeah. split, mm -hmm. not his ability to, to build, build on it. Yeah. You know, he may not be able to build on it. Right. Sure we're only approving that he's requested for the lot to be split. Right. But he can't build on it right now. No. no. Yeah. No. Okay. Thank yeah, you. and so would we be able to split the lot if there wasn't this access easement? No. 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 It'd be land, it's landlocked. Yeah. If it wasn't for that easement. Or if it didn't extend as far south as it does. Right. Because they need 50 feet. Well, it needs to. It goes all the way to the south, way to the south lot line. Yeah. Of track five. Oh, not lot five. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. I can appreciate the uh, confusion, and, and I, I've got the confusion as well, in that it seems, you know, unless all the ducks are in a row, you don't subdivide, and, and so we're saying we can subdivide legally, and then you look at the matter of whether the utilities can fit in the easement or not, which to me sounds like, well, that's... Putting the a, cart before the horse, but that's the way it is, I yeah. guess. Uh, this public yeah. hearing is still open. Does anyone else want to say anything? Laura, Laura Curley, Shell Springs. My question was Carol's question, actually, and I'd like to understand more about the ability. I didn't think you could subdivide lots on an easement, but apparently so. But I think people should read. I tried to pull up the original easement on the county recorder's website just now, and I mm -hmm. wasn't able to do it because I think it's too old. But I would suggest everybody read volume 300, page 197. That is where the easement that allows the access and the utilities is recorded. Sometimes the language in those easements may say things like, this access easement is for utilities and to one unit only or something, you know, that you may be going beyond the scope of the original easement. Do and we have the well, language so of the I don't know. I don't know. We got, we got the recommendation from staff. Mm -hmm. yeah, I, I talked with Green County Engineer. Uh, so and, and, and yeah. they've gone through it step by step. We have the original but, uh, and, uh, nothing in what I see that they that they, they looked at says that the uh, property cannot be divided. Am I correct? In, in my correct. reading, correct. from from you know, and and it appears that that you went back and look and and they researched the original documents because we have that, copies of exhibit that D. We have copies of that divided. And she has other <laughs> You know, the, the, and the legal, property into the file. Our has looked at this as well. Right. Yeah. So, I mean, so you have a copy of the original easement? I, I'm a, I don't think I have seen it, Laura. No. But uh, based upon our legal review, oh, yeah. I think we're... Yeah. Uh, just to answer that question, um, we did look at two versions of the easement, both the later one in the 90s and the original one, which seems to be mostly handwritten. And um, it not only does not prohibit uh, uh, the easement to this property or anything like that, um, but it specifically says which lots cannot be further subdivided. Mm -hmm. And the one that it allows for is the plot five, which it then um, shows, depicts with a divided line between right. them uh, where I propose uh, the division be made. Um, so we, Denise mm -hmm. and I have looked at this. Um, we have looked at the original one. She, she kindly sent me okay. the original one. Right. And, and it specifically says that three and four yes. cannot be. That's right. Off. That's exhibit B. Mm -hmm. Are you talking about this? This one. So there's the description. Yes. That's the that's the original one, I believe. So is this? Do you think that this? Oh, that's this. Laura, is different than the easement document that you're trying to find? This is a plat. Yeah. And you have you read it? No, I tried to pull it up, but it 
online you can only get them after so someone needs to go in and take a picture yeah and make sure it's clear well you know okay so that's a very good point and i um i mean one thing we can do today is um and tell me if i'm wrong is can we approve this with that caveat that uh, they confirm that the easement allows for this to ha occur mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. i would vote no yeah i would delay it why don't we yeah. research it first yeah i appreciate uh, mr david wanting to move along with the project but let let's put the ducks in the row can, can i ask a question denise legal look at this yes and, okay and, so um, so legal would have examined all documents and it's unfortunate i don't have the this showing up on here as yeah. i mean i i don't think it's it's enough for legal to say that they showed us the do that they looked at the document if we don't have the document in front of us we don't know what it says i'm really confused <laughs> because i'm look, we're not talking about this document that says it's received and no. what flat book it's in and how it's recorded well where did you say the other uh, reference was for the easement it's in the um sur the surveyor's new legal so he describes tracks one and track two and then it says any conveying a right of access even previously described in book 200 Oh, this is the new survey, the jet engineering? Yeah, the new survey. Oh, okay. That so was my problem. Referencing. But you want to know, I mean, he's just concerned about describing the needs and bounds. What I'm saying is you got to read the easement to see what rights it allows. If somebody granted that easement way back when, you don't know what they granted, but they did. Is that a drawing? Mm -hmm. It's in the Where legal is, is that? <laughs> it's in the legal description. Yeah, okay. the, the reference to the easement. Oh, that you just oh, read. Yeah. It's in their legal description for yeah. track one yeah. and two. Oh, it's in the legal. legal description. Okay. Oh, okay. And then it says, and conveying a right of access. And they were, see, they're only calling it access, but we're assuming it's also for utilities since there's utilities there. Yeah. So, you know. And then you have to, you have to go to that Book floor. 300, page 197. It's on the last page of right before the big survey. Yes. Right here. Uh, it's the, I think, the next one. Right here. It, yeah, I mean, definitely it needs to be looked at before he can put in any more utilities. Because right now, the plat, which is exhibit B, Dayton Street plat, says um existing utilities on lot four which serve lot five will continue to be the property of the owners of lot five and shall be included in the easement so whatever easement that they're talking about in exhibit b should be read by us i think so you want the light I would like to delay, particularly if a, if a neighbor is asking to have time to speak with a lawyer. Yep. I'm with you. I, I think we should delay, too. Okay. Just because better late than wrong. Yeah. And, 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 and Do you want to say something? Yes. I'm waiting to use the moment without interfering. Not interrupting. Well, the public hearing is still open. I yeah. know. Go so. ahead. My name is Lauren Miller. I live in Yellow Springs. Um, I don't have any skin in the game, but what I was um, aware of and what concerned me was that there was this piece of information that you didn't really have the answer to. And so I'm pleased now to hear and see more people nodding that they do feel there's a need to delay this issue. And I think that by, by delaying, by really looking completely at all these issues, you further increase the confidence that the Yellow Springs residents have in this commission. And I think that's really important. And I'm, I'm glad to see that you're moving in that direction. Thanks. Um, thank, you. thank you. We may appear to be slapdash, but we do try to be thorough. <laughs> and 
and um, yeah. and we're all volunteers and so um, so do we do we table it on the next I think we table it, table it. and I'm sorry Michael we didn't give you a decision today but um, uh, actually if you have that easement that written so description that's what I'm trying to look for because we did look at the night it was a 1998 and a Your surveyor looked at it. He knew where it was. Our surveyor looked at it. Um, it was all publicly available. Yeah, I don't know. So there's a stand. Yeah, let's just leave it. 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 Let's yeah, okay, so at this point, we're going to just table, uh, actually, we'd like to table the, the public hearing um, and continue at our next meeting. Um, do we have a motion to do that? So moved. Do we have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Okay. Um, and if you have that document, those documents, if you can get those to Denise. And if you can, if I have them, I have them from her. Oh, is that right? Okay. I, I think. Okay. We have two, but I'll, I'll okay. I don't okay. have a 300-page 197. What I have is what was in our files. Okay. Okay. So is that something that you fared out, or you talked to the people in the county, or? I, not recorder's office. I talked to Green County Engineer. We can get it. We can. But we can get. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Okay. okay. Thank you. Okay. And so we get that easement. We'll get a legal opinion then as to the. Uh, uh, okay. appropriateness of this lot split okay. and then we'll take this up next month good. okay, okay. Thank thanks for your time appreciate it well thank everybody yeah okay now that that's not taken care of <laughs> um, <laughs> Our next public hearing is the uh, conditional use application for an accessory dwelling at um, 1118 Livermore. Uh, Denise, okay. do you want to start, please? Yeah, um, Laura Curlis, who's present, um, submitted an application for, for an accessory dwelling unit in short-term rental. Um, she purchased the property in May of 2015. Um, the actual garage and uh, the actual accessory structure is uh, larger than uh, what our code uh, currently allows. However, the area where the uh, apartment space is actually does meet our requirements. Um, I asked her, she wanted to do a short-term rental and, and at, so to have it as an accessory dwelling. And I suggested that she come before Planning Commission because there are some things that are non-conforming, um, especially as it relates to um, utilities. Mm -hmm. And she was willing to do that, so she's here about this. So is there anything non-conforming other than the utilities? Um, the, the, the dwelling itself is non-conforming, but she's not adding to the non-conformity. I mean, she's only doing a remodel on the inside. Yeah. Right. So, so no. In, in the, the answer, the issue had to do with the. There were two meters. Well, she's she's coming for a short term rental, mm -hmm. and as well as an accessory dwelling unit. Right. I I couldn't find any paperwork where there had ever been um, an approval for an accessory dwelling unit. I'm oh. not saying that didn't exist, but it's not in any records now okay. and um so she was willing to go ahead and go through the process especially okay. with the short-term rental requirement so we're kind of look like approving two different things okay and we've been talking about the terminology short-term rental for a while right now as it stands what's the definition of a short-term rental what's in the code yeah um, yeah which is uh, uh a week or but typically but less than a year okay but we're planning on changing that we've uh, we've just how how would it that we would approve under the current code we have, we have to approve under the existing yeah, yeah and mm -hmm. it would not affect her when we change the code 
it would still be under the it won't affect her no. No. terminology and, and really of short term for, for right now she would be using it as a, a long term yeah uh, a place for her son to stay. right so if she would change the the use after we have changed the definition then she might have to come back for conditional use my guess is the changes that we're going to make would not require her to yeah okay she would already be yes yeah she would already be under short-term rental yeah it but i mean you know technically she didn't even have to come before us at all here because it's grandfathered in but yeah because of the short-term rental idea and the fact that there are um, existing utilities she was willing to to um, decrease as many of the non-conformities as we have right. on there so so any more questions for Denise? Laura, do you want to come up and add to it? Or not? <laughs> no, I, I really did this for you, so you could talk about short-term rentals. Um, so yeah, my, um, you know, everybody's thinking about that now. Um, taxes are pretty tough here in the community, and so I think people are thinking of creative ways to make money with their properties and, and you know, Airbnb and so forth. I don't, I don't anticipate doing that because I am focused on my son and moving uh, him into this uh, apartment, which, as I understand it from Sam Reck, uh, Eckenrod, that Bob Baldwin dated somebody who lived there. That's how much it's grandfathered, right? So <laughs> it goes back yeah, to... Yeah, I mean, you know, just back, from, our aerial shots of the of that structure it goes way back I it mean, goes way back right. and if you went in it it goes way back but in any event um what's well, interesting so it's on the back of that garage you you know people don't notice it from the mm -hmm. front they, they would notice that any kind of like obviously another car i do have the the driveway pad has room for two vehicles off uh, to the side there from the, the garage and there is a, another parking spot at the front um what can I tell you? It's been separately metered, metered for a long time, the, the electric. Um, there was a water line, there was a gas line, and I thought there was a sewer line. There's a sewer vent and there's a sewer pipe going down, but I did have um, Todd Van Lane camera the sewer, and uh, I've got a good old-fashioned septic system out the back there, so nice. we're not going to reinvigorate that. So if I did um, develop it with your permission, I would have to run a sewer, I'd have to do another tap in and run a sewer line on the north side of the driveway and actually tear up the pad and have to repour part of it. But um, yeah, I thought I had a sewer pipe and I don't. So that was good to know. Well, you have water. I had had water. Had water yeah. That's out. But I we would run. He recommended running the water a different way and bringing it in a different way. And then the electric, we'd run the electric so that it hooked into the meter at the house. There is an electric meter on the side of the garage. I have two meters, so I pay two bills. And then I would eliminate that bill, that readiness to serve charge. And I don't. Yeah, I don't intend to do it as a second long-term dwelling other that's outside my family so I don't not really interested in having another meter okay but it basically cleans up the non-conformity for future use too. right right mm -hmm. okay. happy to answer any other any questions, questions? so okay. yeah that's the back so the property already has a door there's probably one more picture with the orange door. Um, mm -hmm. So the accessory, yeah, that's the backyard. There you can mm -hmm. see the doors. So mm -hmm. you can see that sec closer door, um, the accessory dwelling units. Right. It's uh, 580 square feet. Um, so yeah, I wouldn't be changing the outside of the building. If I really want to spend money, I'll I'd put a picture window on the back because there's um, Friends Care Ponds out the back and it's mm -hmm. scenic. It's very mm -hmm. nice. Okay, thanks. Uh, any more questions for Denise? If not, um, we'll open up a public hearing. This is uh, if you have any comments regarding this uh, application for conditional use. Um, this is your opportunity to please identify yourself. My name is Lauren Miller. I live directly across the street 
from Laura Curlis and the property that you're dealing uh, with. Um, Ms. Curlis has done a lovely job in providing parking. And so whether this be her son or um, sometime later down the road, another family member or even a short-term rental, I don't see it impacting our, uh, the, the road use or uh, any issues that we have. Um, and we're fully supportive of uh, granting the continued use that you are considering. Thank you. Thanks. Uh, anyone else? Sam Ecken Road. Um, I'm Laura's, Laura Curlis's next door neighbor, and my mom, Bambi Williams, and I have been realtors her since 1971 and me since 2004. We came today in support of the plan because uh, <clears throat> the other part of the story that Laura told is I was bragging about having dated someone who lived in that back apartment in the 80s. And that's when Bob went up to me and said, well, I dated somebody in the 50s. <laughs> <laughs> also, right across the street, Mario Capecchi, um, who was a Nobel Prize winner, when he was an Antioch student, he lived in an accessory dwelling in what was J.D. Dawson's home. So all along that street, there's a history <clears throat> of people having auxiliary um, domiciles. And I, I really, to me, it's a no-brainer, but we just wanted to come and support. Thank you. Thanks. Thank, Thank you. you. Uh, anyone else? Okay. Well, if that's the case, then we'll close the public hearing. Uh, do we have any more questions for Denise, for Laura, for uh, not Lauren? Uh, I just want to say that, um, you know, it seems like the only issues were the utility ones, and Laura's very, you know, on board with clearing those up and making it comply and the square footage of the whole unit you know the livable unit um, is in compliance and um, so I I think we sh we can move forward on this anyone else yeah I mean for the accessory dwelling, there's, this would be would have been handled administratively, correct? Uh, no, you would have conditional use if, if, if she was building. Uh, yeah. I mean, <laughs> that she's remodeling existing structure. Oh right, right. Well, yeah, right, exactly. Right. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It was the short-term rental that kind of added, yeah, to, added it. to it. She was, yeah. Okay. Okay. Well, if there's not any more questions or comments, we have uh, some kind of a motion. I move that we approve this conditional use uh, short-term rental uh, at 1118 Livermore Street. Second. Judy, do you want to call the roll, please? I do. Reed? Yes. Sims? Yes. Stiles? Yes. Pozell? Yes. Sir Buchan? Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, the next item on our list are the text amendments for the uh, code modifications to include pocket neighborhood developments. Sounds like you guys worked quite a bit on this last week, last month. Uh, we have, uh, what, six? Oh, geez. Nine separate hearings regarding these text amendments. Um, do you want to start, Denise? Uh, sure. Um, the, one of, one of the uh, requirements we hadn't talked about before was actually in the planning code, not the zoning code, um, which is 122606 design standards, and it has to do with um, trees. So we just wanted to add pocket neighborhood development into that for residential areas. 
Okay, we're going to do these one at a time. Okay. That's nice. Just to be clear. Thank you. Yeah. She likes it better that way. <laughs> um, I just, before we get into this, I just have one question. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of developments in town. Thistle Creek, mm -hmm. and then what's the other one? Stan Cliff. Stan Cliff, yeah. Right. How would those have been looked differently if this code was in place? Uh, they would not have had to go through a plan unit development process. It would have been a faster process. They still would have had to do a level B. How would they have looked with respect to roads and all that stuff? And they, they would have to still have streets and it depends. Well, they, both of those properties actually are uh, homeowners associations, I do believe. Yes, Stancliffe and Thistle Creek. Um, now, Thistle Creek is a little bit unusual and has that public road. Um, so they probably would have had to go through the PUD. Um, I think that would be the difference. Would be but Thistle Creek has that little loop of a road so mm -hmm. that everyone has road footage. Yeah, and that, then it's considered you a public road. You can eliminate that, right? Yes. Yes, you can eliminate. So essentially, all that property could be public, open space. Yes, and mm -hmm. the, the design would have been different in that there would have been little pockets of parking areas yeah. instead. Yeah, or a parking area on the road, <laughs> off yeah. of King Street. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Um, any discussion about the tree modification type language? Is that going in the first one? This is the amendment of uh, 12.6067C. And you can see uh, towards the end, Denise has added PND, Pocket Neighborhood Development. And that's the modification. That's the only modification. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's it. But we have to have a public hearing. Yeah. That's why we're doing this. <laughs> so are we having to approve each one as we go? That's what we're make doing. a yes. motion to approve. Yes. Okay, I make a motion. Well, hang on here. Oh. Any questions? Public hearing. Okay. If that's no questions, then we'll open a public hearing. If anyone have, has any questions about the modification proposed to chapter 122607C trees please come up and address the planning commission if not we'll pl close the hearing any further discussion would you like to make a motion i would like to make a motion to approve design standards 1226.06 i second it judy would you call the roll styles. yes <coughs> styles Yes. Sims? Yes. Zerbuchen? Yes. Ozell? Yes. Reed? Yes. Okay, the next public hearing is Amendment of Table 124802, Schedule of Uses, to include the addition of pocket neighborhood developments as a conditional use in residents A, B, and C. Uh, we have that new table in front of us. Uh, anyone have any questions for Denise? Take that as a no. I do. Okay. Um, what, what, what does this mean? <laughs> it's conditional. That's what it means. <laughs> yes. Okay. I get it. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Any further questions? If there's no further questions, we'll open the public hearing. If you have any questions about this amendment to table 124802, schedule of uses, added. Um, pocket neighborhood developments please go forward as a conditional use well just because I'm here can you put in plain English for the audience what that really means like what what does this mean a pocket neighborhood yeah like okay so you know just residential a for example is the least dense and yeah. people buy into residential a figuring the 
lots are going to be bigger and they're not going to be so many right. neighbors and not so much traffic and now you drop right you're dropping a pocket neighborhood which increases density and changes the yes. character from residential a to even really highly urban if if that pocket is in around you yes. is that right do you want to give the thumbnail <clears throat> that's pretty much it the density um, requirements is for the number of uh, single family units would um, are equal to what was already in the code so in residential a you could have any more than six per acre, per acre. in uh, residential b eight and a residential c up to 14. and and the difference between um there there's also other requirements about uh green space and setback sort of thinking about um, uh, planned unit development that has sort of communal <coughs> access on a large lot. Is that correct? Would you yeah, say? Yeah, it's another sense? tool instead of using a PUD to develop a, a single unified track. The densities are no greater than what's allowed in the code right now, but it allows you to, instead of subdividing that, you can create a, a simply a homeowners association, have those individual homes owned by the individuals, but the property owned by the association. And it gives the developer some flexibility with respect to open space and, and, and in fact, there's requirements for common open space that are part of the code. Well, a, a follow-up question. I mean, with, with the setback requirements, and so, well, let's just use residential A. With all those requirements, how big of a piece of land would you have to have to do a pocket neighborhood and meet all the requirements like five acres one acre I mean well I mean if you want you can have even less than one acre yeah you'd have uh, to have it for you but the issue is if you have something that's less than one acre you have to be able to have at least four structures on that to eliminate someone hopefully from having a lot where they just want to go ahead and build a compound for their family you're not going to be able to do that because you have to have at least a minimum of four structures in, on that lot and it would be doubtful in a lot of uh, locations to be able to meet all the setback requirements the parking the common space yeah that's what i'm kind of getting at yeah it have to be i think it's almost i think the smallest is like an acre well we don't really we don't say we don't say, we don't say. We don't say that but to shoehorn it all in yeah. with the required footages. So if somebody has a, a half an acre um, and uh, they could put up to six, the issue would be that they couldn't put seven because they'd have to have more than an acre to even go into that next level. But they couldn't do six if they couldn't get the setbacks. Right, they, 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 they ha and they have to meet the setback requirements for that uh, zoning. Yeah, those haven't changed for the perimeter of the lot. And, those and it would have to be for the perimeter of the lot, yes. And it, and it sort of, it, it changes some kind, kinds of problems when, you know, like a LAR, where you would have to subdivide and give access to all those different lots you don't have to do that because there's like a single access to multiple units you know so multiple you separate dwellings i just had a question um this sort of begs the question there are usually underlying uh, protective covenants and restrictions for all the different neighborhoods in Yellow Springs. And we usually don't ever refer to those because they're buried way back in the record books and many people aren't even aware that, that the developer had to abide by them, right? Because I'm thinking in particular of Birch One, um, which had, my, my mom taught me, um, it, by design, you had to have a minimum of an acre to to build mm -hmm. in Birch One, and that that's residence A, mm -hmm. so it's not just you don't just have to. I, I'm I'm asking a question. 
um, do you still have to abide by the original covenants and restrictions, or would this change with with this update? That would That's be attached to the yeah. deed, right? We can't override a deed. No, yeah, you'd have to abide by the original requirements, okay. but we're thinking it's probably just wouldn't be in a neighborhood per se, right? Well, I mean, there's some a couple of little places in town that you could do this. There are, aren't very many, really. Right. I mean, you could think about think about just <laughs> where they are. Not, there's only like two places I can think of. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Yeah, but, so but, it's there, not. but there have been situations where people have called up and said, you know, I'd like to build a second house on my property, um, and maybe for family, but they don't want to do the accessory dwelling unit because that's too small. They're not willing to maybe be within 10 feet. So it's an addition, a covered uh, breezeway with an addition. And, you know, they wouldn't be allowed to do that under this either. I mean, they would have to have a minimum of four units. Okay. Yeah. And meet, and meet all those other setback requirements. Okay. Thank you. So, Carol and your brother are going to be mad at me for asking this probably, but that lot five, mm -hmm. it was a whole thing instead of subdividing it. That's a pretty big, that's what, yeah. that's pretty big. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That mm -hmm. could be a pocket neighborhood, theoretically, yeah. right? Mm -hmm. Yep. Mm -hmm. You're going to be mad at me. Laura, I drew that same okay. type of conclusion. <laughs> and the old rabbit run farm, whenever it becomes mm -hmm. developable. Yeah. Um, I mean, you can think there's three or four places around that are at that large of a size. That, and I, I thought about it as an after the fact. I thought of this will break. I thought, or yeah, this will break. I was like, well, instead of having that weird little road that goes back in there, you could just have a sidewalk and parking on the street. You know, it's funny, when I first saw some yeah. drawings for what was uh, Thistle Creek was intended to be, it was a, exactly this. It was, uh, it was like a green space in the middle with all these cute little houses that around it. Yes. And that's not how it ended up. And that might have been because of the PUD process. Mm -hmm. I don't know for sure. Yeah, that forced that. It forced weird, the, weird the public screen. road and all <laughs> yeah. that. Yeah. Now, this is sort of like to, you know, in a place where we would necessarily be doing a PUD and every single requirement is hashed out and changed to fit that specific need, this is sort of like an option that a developer could go through the process to do that we've agreed on is okay in these set, set circumstances where someone would be asking for a PUD and we're saying this is a better option, this is a standard option for those people. Yeah. And it's not about increasing density, it's really about just another tool. Another tool to create housing on a large lot where right. you would PUD, otherwise have to subdivide. I think the PUD, although you can go and get a variance on the PUD, but usually the PUD has to be at least five acres yeah. or more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, this is on something smaller than that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Any further discussion? <laughs> uh, back to our original question. Do we have a motion yeah, regarding the modifications to table 124802? I do have one question on this. You do. I noticed that it says under that uh, 124802, it says section 126208E7, and it's not referring to an E7. And I'm wondering with things that were changed over time. If the E actually became like a something else, um, I just noticed that. Oh, 126802. 6208. 6208. Yeah. That's right, isn't it? It's 126208. That's what you have, at least. E. Well, 6. E. Got it. Chapter. Oh, right. It's going to be short. Yeah, it's going to be short. Yeah, yeah short okay. Yeah, if we can leave, yeah, if we can leave that. Is it good where it is? It's going to be. Um, We're going to have to change the short. We will term. eventually Seven. have to. It, if it passes, if it, it'll pa be, it would be E6. It would be E6 if. And we'd have to change short term, short -term rentals. rentals to E7. Okay, well, we don't need to worry about that okay. today. All right, no. cool. 
Why, why wouldn't we fix it now? I would, because yeah, the short-term well, rentals hasn't passed. Can, uh, no, it's in there. It's in there it's already. It's in there as E6. Short-term rentals is E6 oh, right now. And, and everything's in alpha order. Okay. So. I would say it's probably better to change it now. Okay. So we want to swap 6 and 7? Yeah. I like that better. Let's make it right. I didn't realize it was there. Okay. So you're swapping the section numbers, not the alphabetized correct. list, correct? Yeah, just correct. Okay. Seven versus six. Yep. Yeah. Okay. With that uh, modification, any other further discussion? If not, I will open the public hearing. If anyone has any questions about modifications to uh, Table 124802, schedule of uses, please address the Microphone, if not, I will close the public hearing. Do we have a motion regarding this? So moved. As changed. As changed. As changed. Second. Second. Uh, Judy, Sims. Call? Yes. Styles. Yes. Elzel. Yes. Zerbukin. Yes. Reed. Yes. Okay, next is a uh, text amendment for Section 124803, spatial requirements to include in the footnotes the pocket neighborhood development language for footnotes 2, 3, and 4. Um, and Laura, here's where those, some of those densities are described. And it talks about single family versus uh, uh, a duplex. Can we make it bigger on the screen? Absolutely. Please. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Is that helpful? Any discussion? No. If not, uh, we'll open the public hearing. Um, Anyone has any questions regarding this modification to 124803? Can somebody explain it for the audience? Uh, so really, so what this is, is um, uh, this table talks about minimum lot area and width. And um, so we've added footnotes with respect to the pocket neighborhood development. So footnote number, number two talks about uh, density in RA resident A, and that's the six units per acre um, as a density. Footnote number three is for residence B. Um, uh, it notes that uh, uh, you can include uh, two family uh, units as well, and uh, so you add the pocket neighborhoods, and a that density is eight units per acre, and that's, that eight is already in the code. And then footnote four is for resident C. And that, uh, um, that's up to 14 per acre as already in the code. So we're, we're adding a limit. Well, we're not adding a limit necessarily, well, but we're, we're putting, we're saying that the limit is six units per acre for residence A. Yes eight units per acre for residence B, which is how it already was, mm -hmm. 14 units per acre for residence C, which is how it already was, but we're adding pocket neighborhood right. developments into all three Correct. there, uh, you know. Correct. Correct. As part of the units that are being counted. Right. It's just confusing how the units mesh with the minimum lot area, you know. I, hard to envision it. So it's more area and less yeah. units. So the minimum lot is set, okay, so minimum lot where you could do a pocket neighborhood park, and then you have a pocket, so a minimum lot area would be 7,500 square feet. Yeah, in res You could put a pocket neighborhood on 7,500 square feet with six units, if you could meet all the other requirements. Not more than six units. Not more than six yeah. units, right. 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 
and w and there is no minimum square footage size for the house anymore, right? Not not district. our in our code, but there is in the Ohio. Uh, I know, but the Ohio, code. it's like I calculated it once, it's like 140 square feet because you got to have like a bathroom, a kitchenette, that like the minimum in the building code is like nothing. <laughs> It's like, yeah, it's like real yeah, tiny, teeny tiny. And then if tiny. you add another bedroom, it's another square so, feet or something. Uh, yeah. It's just, yeah. And I don't know, we, I don't know that I've done the math. Has anybody done the math? Can you put 14 units on 40? On 40, no, you can't. That's not, that's like not an acre. But that's the minimum lot area just for that part, not that's sort of separate from how many units yes. it, that's just a minimum you know a RC could be 7,500 square feet and I don't know if you could get 14 units on that but you could you know it could be way more than it could be 10,000 square feet I mean we had a, quite a discussion about this before in terms of you want to say that you have to start with one acre but it, it became that you would that really limited you even more. I mean, we wouldn't have any. Yeah, there's even fewer spot, spots fewer in places. town um, of that size. I, it'll be interesting if anyone actually uses this. <laughs> wow. Right. And we've all seen pictures in magazines of how cute these can be, right? If yeah. they've done yeah. well. Although it strikes me it's also like spot zoning. Yes. Uh, no. Drop it in. Well, except because that it's still residential within a residential. Except they could. And you're maintaining they, the densities and the setbacks. We're not changing. So we're not changing the densities or the setbacks. We're only changing the number of units. No, we're not even changing yeah, the number of yeah, units yeah. per lot. It's yeah. just about street access. Just means you can get rid of street access, and you can yeah. you can devote that property to common open space. Right. Yeah. It's more a change in the configuration of uh, how all the dwellings can be placed on a property. So rather than having them on one street on a grid, you have, can be more creative by having them all yeah, spaced forward I mean, into really, the common area. You, have a you garden. know, what you brought up about our, our, our lot Partition earlier yes. is a perfect exactly. example of yeah. this. Yeah. Yeah. In, in RA, you cannot have a duplex, and so in this, you can't either. In yeah. RA, okay. um, it still follows the code as far as that goes. So, can we use that as an example? And if so, if it if he has a duplex on his big lot like that, and he didn't subdivide it, would he be able to? sort of that duplex would be existing and add a pocket neighborhood? Well, and the thing is, is what It'd we... It'd be a non-conforming no. structure. Yeah. No. Mm -hmm. The folks in the back... If, if his house was a one... If that original house was one unit, mm. it could be a pocket... Conditionally a pocket neighborhood. Perhaps. Perhaps. I, you know, that's an interesting question because that is grandfathered in so he can't change the, the footprint in any way of that structure but it is a two-family so he and actually, if it wasn't a two-family he could build now more but what, but what I'm anyway. saying is he could technically build he could count that as two and only you have to put two more on as oh, long as that's our we, we have it in our thing if it's an existing it counts as one if it's an existing, yeah. it's going to have an existing okay. single family or duplex structure. And we made it count, we'll count as one. towards the minimum. I mean, maybe we should say that. Yeah, we didn't count really as one. specify. We'll say we count okay. as one. Yeah, when we get to that, maybe we can make that just count as one. Sure. Okay. I mean, but it's, so, but we, did, we don't have that. that but so, can. yes, if, if, if this passes and it counts as one, he wouldn't need to subdivide. And or he could build an accessory <coughs> dwelling. Or he could build an accessory that's, dwelling. That's why I was here today. He wanted to do that. Yeah. So if we pass this, he would he could he wouldn't need to subdivide. If council passes it council with that language. If council passes this, he could create a pocket neighborhood development out of that. And he couldn't have more than six units. Six units. Yeah. 
except for the and utilities the, that have to be run to all of those dwellings mm -hmm. and then you run into the constraints of the yeah. utilities. Yeah, there so. would be constraints <laughs> and that would limit it more than the six, but his house would count as one. Mm -hmm. If if that's what we decide it's and what council place. decides. There could be constraints. Yes. Right. Mm -hmm. Hmm. Any further discussion? Mm -hmm. yeah, Did you say so so you had the public, public hearing? hearing? You need to close the public yes. hearing. Okay, we'll close the public hearing. Any further discussion? We have a motion. I move to approve 1248.03 spatial requirements. Second. Terry seconds. Judy. Hold on. Yes. Styles. Yes. 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 Okay. The next is the um, modifications to 126004 uses, principal use per lot. Um, and the modification is to include planned unit developments and pocket neighborhood developments. Any discussion? Any questions? Not? Should we should explain this? Can we talk about it a little bit for the record? Sure. Denise, do you want to? Um. I was just wondering why PUD is underlined. It probably hey, shouldn't be. It shouldn't be. It's already, already there. Right? Yeah, it's already there. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. you know, I think it was because it was just, it's just in there as PUD, and so I wanted to spell it out as planned unit development. Good. Okay, so that's why it is. So it just shouldn't be underlined where it's PUD. Well, yeah, because we then put, it's okay. We put it in parentheses, parentheses yep. so it has a bit, changed a bit. Um, but yeah, this is principal uses per lot. Um, you can't have more than one principal building on a lot unless it's a it's a group of multi a multiple family dwelling uh, project or like a PUD that we have and so we're just adding pocket neighborhood developments into that and I did go ahead then and and spelled out plan unit development so that it wasn't confusing as PUD PND and one of the things about that is that um, in order to do that as a pocket neighborhood development, just like it would be for a PUD, you have to have <coughs> building, the um, individual buildings have to share the parking. And so this says buildings under single ownership. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. That is not something we're requiring for PNDs, is it? Well, I mean, if mm -hmm. the homeowners association is considered yeah, the owner, the that's a single owner. Right. Even though it's an organization. Okay. Um, and as I, I understand what you're saying, that is a little confusing. Yeah. The the property is under single ownership. Because I was under the impression yeah. that the that's a good point. The yeah, it's not the unit that we weren't we weren't talking about. We, we're actually limiting the, the number of, I don't agree with this, but just as, as I remember our conversation, and I'm sure we'll get to it, we're limiting the percentage of these, unit, these single family dwellings that are multifamily dwelling, or these dwellings that are multifamily and that are single family and that are rental and that are owned. So like, you know, mm -hmm. if there's one, if mm. if the buildings are all under single ownership, yeah, don't uh, know what that means. Let's see, because it's all because you know, uh, legal just pointed out, Jessica, that um, that we're also talking about uh, industrial buildings. I don't know if maybe it just applies to that commercial or industrial buildings. It's not Possibly. clear. It's but, not clear. Um, I mean, it's all on one lot. No, but I'm saying maybe this, these one, two, three, and four 
Mm -hmm. Only know. apply to this commercial and industrial buildings. Right. Determined by planning commission to be princi a principal use collectively based on meeting all these criteria. Oh. No, that's, I mean, that's not how it's written. Well, it talks about right. signs, yeah. it talks about parking. Parking, right. it talks, so I think that is what it means, maybe, but it's not clear. So, uh, but it's in a list, but, but, like, like commas. P, but PUDs, like, the, like, like PNDs, um, do require the HOA. Yep. So I think that it's not, I think that's, that needs to be clear to that. I think that's what they're meaning, right? Yeah, because it can't be single ownership. Because mm -hmm. each, if, if it's home ownership, each person or family who has a home is going to pay taxes on it. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. And the so homeowner's association not be single ownership either. I wouldn't think. What's mixed that? use developments wouldn't be single ownership yeah. either. Right. Right. Or planned unit developments. I, I would suggest you pull this one because, yeah. in terms of a public hearing, this is yeah. not yeah, we, sufficient. Yeah. Yeah. Notice. This one so, can I move to table it? Or do we need to have a public That's hearing? Fine. Well, we didn't open the public hearing. We haven't so. opened the public yeah. hearing. Okay. So, so we'll we're just going to we're just, we're we're just gonna pass and move on. Yeah. Okay. And you're going to you bring that look at that text and get back to us? Yeah. Means we'll have to advertise. Yeah. I mean, it might just again. be simply st stating that um, uh, on a single lot under the control of the homeowners association theory instead of sure. single ownership. I mean. What I think the point about whether that is there need to be a bullet list for the industrial well, it might be, commercial? It might be from, yeah, right. well, we'll look into that, yeah. yeah. Okay. Okay. Okay, so uh, with that, we'll move on. And this is kind of the meat of it. Um, the uh, uh, public hearing for modification to Chapter 1262 08 specific requirements for these pocket neighborhood developments. And um, um, this really is the section that ties all those other tables together. Um, Can I be excused for three minutes? Sure. Can we continue without you? Yeah, go ahead. Okay. So, Denise, do you yeah. want to start? Yeah, so the, in, the, in, in 126208, um, as a result of our last meeting and the changes that we made in that meeting, uh, I wasn't clear on a few things, and in that area, um, I just went ahead and italicized it again just to make sure. Um, so, what we're looking at is an existing, under B7 on the first page, an existing single family dwelling or duplex structure will count towards the minimum of four dwelling units as noted in section B6. And we just mentioned uh, that it should say or duplex structure will count as one dwelling unit towards the minimum of four dwelling units as noted in section B6. So why? Well, I mean, that's just something we were talking about. I'm just right. Okay. I just made a note of it. That a duplex structure will count. But I feel like why wouldn't a duplex count as two? Well, part of that is because we said in Resident State you can't have duplexes in the pocket neighborhoods. Okay. So, right now, a duplex is non-conforming in residence A. So you're kind of perpetuating that. So are we changing that? Well, that's the question. Right? Overall, I mean, Right now in residence A, not even thinking about pocket neighborhoods, is a duplex allowed? Nope. No. So, why would it count? Why wouldn't it count towards two if it it already exists? We know they exist. We know We're not one. allowing them. Well, I think maybe it's just a way to curb curb the density a little bit more. This. I, Get, counting it towards well, let's use one seven four five eight. Sure, as an example, mm -hmm. it's an RA. So um, then you'd have that. Uh, you'd have two. You don't have to build two more. Whereas if you only count as one, you have to do three more, and maybe that would make it a little bit more difficult to be able to build on that. I don't know. Wouldn't it make it more difficult if you? 
Oh, you're saying you would have to build three more. Three more. Yeah. Yes. Because I know already. Because the kind of minimum is four. That you're not going to have that situation come up very much, but I'm, 745 is the only example I can even think of right now. <laughs> I mean, it would just limit from being able to do something that was really dense that would kind of take away from the whole idea of. But what if it. they could do four, then it's see, even more dense. But see, in a lot of these types of codes, you have to start with an acre. To yeah. This, and we're not saying that. But if if, if, really if we counted more, if we counted seven four five yep. as one and and they had to build four right, but I, but separate units, then two. there's not that's true. That's what I'm thinking. Then there's five units. They're not right. separate, but they're right. it's five instead of four. Right. And four is a minimum, so you can have five. So if we say yeah, but the we're not. But the, the way this is written, though, it implies. That a duplex would be two. Mm -mm. It doesn't I say. I don't think it like, says one way or the other. It, say one one way. it says we'll count towards the minimum. I think one way or the other, you have to clarify. If duplex yes. is two. Yes, I think it or should one. be. It should be specified. Yeah. Mm -hmm. in, then in that case, you should also specify that a non-conforming structure will count as only one dwelling unit, or some such thing that addresses your issue for residence A. Well, I think it does. An existing single-family dwelling or duplex structure, existing duplex structure, will count blank towards a minimum of four dwelling units. I mean, we talk about the non-conformal above that. Well, that doesn't clarify for me the extent of the non-conformal. And then it references B6, which is a minimum of four dwelling units around a common open space area are required. Mm. Yeah, that's what I was saying. I mean, I'm trying to flip this. If we, if we were requiring an acre of land mm -hmm. in our A in order to build, then you could see where you might want to make the du duplex two just to, well, I mean, it wouldn't really matter. I mean, just to make it so that they can only build three instead of. They could build, uh, yeah, four more up to, excuse me, how up to six. If it's just one, it, no, they ha oh, you can build up to six, yeah. But the minimum is four, right? Right. Mm -hmm. So if they have one, to get to be a PND, they only have to build three mm -hmm. if it counts as one. If it counts as two, mm -hmm. they only have to build two to be a PND. I don't know why that's a bad thing. To only, you know, that means there's actually three buildings on the lot instead of four, four. buildings. And it, so we're... Well, I hear devil's advocate for a second. You might have, I mean, RA seems to be sensitive area in town. Yeah. People, you know, it's bigger lots, they want to keep it that way. And, you know, you may have, I don't know, there may be accessory dwelling units, so to speak, or mother-in-law suites, I don't know. And is that, is that going to be the argument? That, well, we already have two, so I only need to do two more. And then I can be a PND. Yeah. And then I can build more. So, because if they weren't a PND, they wouldn't be able to build anything right. more. Right. They would have to subdivide. If they already had an accessory structure. Do if they already had they a, an accessory structure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's a accessory different dwelling. That's right. not in here, though. Yeah, no, it, does, it does talk about does it. You cannot have an accessory structure in here. Does it say if there's one existing? That they it does not it down? say anything about that. No. Because I didn't think about that. <laughs> I know. Because well, I mean, and that's why I'm saying maybe we shouldn't count it as anything, but whatever, on, what, whatever is existing should only count as one. Whatever is existing should only count as one? So what if someone has um, has a house and an accessory dwelling unit? I feel like you guys are back in the soup with this one too, in terms of whether or not you can yep. pass this one because it's not it isn't. No, we can't make any kind of meaningful changes. It's 
without. Because I think you need to. We need to address accessory dwelling unit. Because yes. all it says is single family or duplex. So we need to add accessory dwelling. We need to. Yeah. How would we count if there's an existing accessory dwelling on the property that someone wants to turn into a pocket neighborhood development? And back to Rose's question, how do you handle a duplex structure that's existing in the total count? And Denise is suggesting that we count, no matter what it is, as one. That's one option. And it's not to increase density, it's to make it harder to get your property to conform to being able to access the P&D provisions. Is that a good example of why we would count it as one so that they would need to build more structure? They would want, they would need to want to build more single structures on a single lot than to access this sort of higher level of I think we're just trying to clarify if we count a single family yeah, dwelling as one or a duplex as one or as two. But, and is that? But see, see, originally a lot of the pocket neighborhood developments are raw land that they're yes. developing on. And, you know, and it was suggested um, that, that we allow it to be on something that's already built. And here, and this, these are the complications that we're having with that. Mm -hmm. right. yeah. I, I'm not clear as to why you would not follow the requirements for the residential district in which the pocket neighborhood is being proposed which I thought was sort of Rose's brow furrowing there if, if a duplex is not permissible in residence a then a, then it's a non-conforming use you would have to deal with it as such if it is permissible in residence B then why would you not count that as two dwelling units and then two more would need to be added I, I mean it just makes sense to roll with the code in that fashion but that would mean redoing it pretty significantly if you're going to look at it that way. Well, I, mean, I think ultimately we need to get it right. So mm -hmm. if it means slogging through it a little longer, I mean, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, I think that this question really s changes the question that we're trying to answer with the PND because we haven't been talking about existing structures at all, at least when, when I've been in in meetings when we we're talking about it we really didn't address that and that is they're not necessarily in yellow springs but sort of as a wider understanding of a large lot with one house that happens that happens right and or a lot a lot with one house and, a, and an accessory dwelling and maybe and, it's huge. And, and we say in here no accessory dwelling yeah or you know so, so the question back to us is how do you deal with that? Yeah. So something that's already there. Something yeah. that's great. If it's a duplex in the rest of the day, it's already grandfathered in. How does it count? How do we want it to count in this? in this? How does an existing accessory structure count? I mean, or is it just something this? flat out you can't have it? If you want to use this, you're gonna to have to demo it. <laughs> yeah, that's, I mean, that's the way we reason out. Yeah. 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 If we want to be that strict about it. Yeah. Doesn't make sense. No, it doesn't make I sense. I mean, it it definitely it 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 changes the feel of the neighborhood. I think in a way that is different than mm -hmm. building something new on a on a lot by itself. So you, you know, think? like what I think I, is I that if really someone wanted to do that, they anything on the land that they started, would have but, to that they would have know. to subdivide that they would have to that 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 existing structure it it gets as many accessory dwelling units as it's allowed, and if you have land that you can subdivide that's still big enough for a PUD PND, then you do it. But I don't. Well, that's one way to address this. So then essentially you're starting with a blank slate, right? You're starting with just open, yeah. undeveloped property. I guess. And, when that, and then when that divide happens, they have to come to us anyway, before a PND would ever be addressed. To do that. Well, not necessarily. I mean, if it's a straight subdivision, she can, it's a staff deal. Yeah. I thought if you're combining, it's a staff deal. If you're dividing, that's a minor subdivision. Oh, okay. 
I mean, tonight, if it were for the easement deal, yeah, this yeah, would have yeah, been yeah, a staff. Yeah. Okay, right. it would just been on so your So Susan had something to say. Well, I was just going to say that if it's a if it's a duplex that is in good shape, I think that's wrong than to say you can't count that as a structure on it. That basically they would have to demolish it if they were wanting to do that. So then you um, count as one or two. Yeah. So I so I don't agree with Rose. I think that an existing structure if there's one there um, we should count it and I guess I'm leaning to that if it's, a, if it's a duplex to count it as two I can see an accessory dwelling that you'd say that counts as with the house as one because since they're not permitted in it although duplexes aren't permitted either <laughs> and where I'm, I'm looking at it is I think we need to come back what, to this. Whatever, whatever, I think we're going to come back to this yeah. structure is on yeah. it and if it's a I think we were trying to address the non conforming uh, that there was an existing structure on it right. in our last meeting and, and we came up with uh, some kind of wording but maybe it needs more work and so we should table this one and look at the next yeah and move on so you have our comments what direction do we want to give Denise I mean that's not really fair to her I, I don't really have it I honestly I feel like I've talked about several options but not I don't I don't see one that I actually am leaning towards. I don't disagree with Susan. Susan said she disagreed with me, but I don't. I don't agree with myself at all. <laughs> I, I there we go. I clear. could live <laughs> and count it either as one unit or two. Yeah. As long as we. Okay, so we have that. Okay, so what about accessory dwellings? We're saying they're not allowed, and and so. It, so they don't count. You have to address if the. If it exists, are you going to say they have to knock it down? No. No. It's just that it would count as it, it, the house and the accessory dwelling would count as one. So you say mm -hmm. an existing single family dwelling with, an, if it has an accessory dwelling. Including. Property, including any accessory dwelling units. Yeah. Because you can look, how many accessory dwellings could you have? Just one. So you can look at the one. It should be technically part of the. Mm -hmm. So it should be. But the property away from the home is going to be held in by the homeowners association. So you're going to have this little. They may want to tear it down and make another <laughs> tiny house. Let's hope so. And this may not be the norm. This may be. I don't think it is. <laughs> I, Just yeah. in case, you <laughs> never know. Yeah. I mean, unfortunately, that's the problem with this code is where we get in trouble is where these little edges are. Edges. Right. Yeah. And. and Somebody can I know council probably thinks we're nuts with going through all these yeah. text changes yeah. meeting it's, after meeting. It's very strange yeah. what we're doing because we're making something trying to like limit this hypothetical person but still let them do something that they hypothetically. So there could be that person that wants to do something that we don't want them to do in this but they follow all the rules and like you know, so we're like trying to catch them, but we don't even know who they are and what they're trying to well, do. Well, we're not trying to catch them. We're just trying to make sure that, that there's some certainty yes. when they look at yes. it. Or when Denise has to talk to them. Right. She yeah. can't just say, well, I don't know. Right. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Or that we're not allowing them to do something we don't want them to do in this. Are yeah. you? Are I don't you, think it's not allowed. We're just trying to make it clear. Mm -hmm. Right. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. are, are you permitted by, to put something in the code that says um, accessory dwelling units within for property being considered for a PND, accessory dwelling units will be considered on a case-by-case -case basis by the Planning Commission. You could have an accessory dwelling unit that is 66, well, 800 square feet, completely detached uh, house-looking unit that you wanted to consider as, in fact, you might have another was on top of a garage that you, in fact, did not want to get. I mean, yeah. to me, I don't know that you can cover all the right. mm -hmm. land you need to cover yeah. with yeah. a couple of sentences. And if you're permitted that latitude, and it's in the code that you're permitted that latitude, it might solve that problem. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a good suggestion. It's the voice of reason. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. 
Thank you. You're welcome. So I think we shouldn't even go any further with this at this point. Yeah. Okay. 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 So you're going to come back to the new text on that. All right. Yes. Give it on this do we want to keep on, or do we want to, since we're coming back to this next <laughs> meeting, it is 9 after 9 o'clock? Oh, for the other stuff? I yeah. Think we, just, we should come back to it. We're going to come back. Yes. Oh, we're parking. stopping. So we're going to come back at parking. Second, yes. Yeah. Parking is someone's favorite. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, they were. Oh, that's when we came back to So we got yeah. all the rest of those. Yeah. Wait, we're not talking about C or D? Nope. Nope. Did you drink a lot of coffee or something ahead of this? Is that okay, Rose? <laughs> Can we just defer this? Because we'll have to come back no, to two I meetings mean, for sure. No, I mean, but she said next meeting we're doing parking. That's where we stop. That's, That's where we stop one. in terms so we of have our public hearings. Oh, okay. It was principal uses. We actually yeah, stopped at principal uses. uses. I mean, we come back on that That's one correct. Too, so. Yeah, but well, wouldn't, so, wouldn't parking be easy to go to? That's what it is. Well, we do have other things month. to talk about tonight. Yeah, we got a couple more topics here. So. Yep. And a lot of definitions, which we may end up changing at least on. I don't know. But does everyone agree it's 1.5 spaces? That's what he's saying. Yeah. Oh. You want to go ahead and start? No. 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 I'm not just just realized what I was looking for. Yeah. So, okay. Um, okay. So we're going to defer the rest of these until next meeting, yeah. and that puts us back to old business. Old businesses, comprehensive land use plan discussion of update process. And uh, we're not going to delve into that until we get through this. So. Okay. Um, uh, do we have any new business? Uh, oh no, I have some agen agenda plans. So yeah, agenda planning. We had short-term rentals on there now. Um, just what? We need to look at pocket neighborhoods. Uh, yeah, we need to do that too. <laughs> yeah. Um, Denise mentioned that uh, she and I sat down with a couple of council members. Um, um, there were two things that I, I guess my impression, you could correct me, Denise. Um, uh, they were worried about one, the um, creating a difficulty for someone who wanted to just randomly have a short term rental, not like a, 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 a standalone place. If you want to rent out the bedroom for you know five weekends a year, they didn't want to make that some kind of onerous deal. And, and they also wanted us to consider the impact of short term rentals on affordability of housing in the village. Um, Matt brought that up, um, and it wasn't something that they had really thought about, I don't think, that it could impact, you know, long-term uh, long rental. I think we know that, but but how do you address that with short-term rental? Because that's really the property owner that's making that decision. Yeah, right. so there's some quest of things that, um, in fact, you can't tell someone they can't do yeah. that. Right. Yeah. Um, there's some limitations you can place on them in terms of number of nights per year and that kind of thing that might dissuade them from buying a small home and turning it into a short-term rental property. But, you know, I guess if, if people were so upset with the minimal amount of stuff that we were suggesting. Yeah. Can you imagine how upset they'll be if we say you can only rent this place mm -hmm. for X yeah. number of days? Because some people are seeing this as income and, yeah. and that and they so need that income. I think the intent is to kind of separate those people, <laughs> those groups into two groups. One, people who are doing it just for some supplemental income. Yeah, I mean, whatever. As so if someone who's investing in a property and instead of turning it into a long term rental, that at, brings people to town, to the schools, you know, that kind of thing. Members of the community, they turn into a short-term rental, yeah. which just has people coming in and out. Yeah, I think and a lot of, like, you, if you go on Airbnb, a lot of those places, they're not available right now. They're just up there so they can turn them on, like, if they're leaving, you know, like, for a weekend or something, they're ready to do that and not, it's not like a year-round thing. So, yeah, so, well, so I think there's, and, and I guess there, there are some of them that are. Yes. Between but, but, are you living on the property? If you're living on the property where you're doing this, yeah. then we don't care. Right. Yeah. Right. The point I made to to them was, why are we? Um, why is it okay to buy a? Uh, why is the village allowing people to buy a small home and turning into short-term rental? At the same time, we're taking our tax dollars and we're supplementing affordable housing, <coughs> the no. construction of it, that. At the same time, these other other homes are are leaving the the housing market, the affordable housing market too. Yeah. If you look at a lot of them, and we're also having to provide more law enforcement for 
additional people that are in our community. And the neighbors don't aren't notified that that's happening. Don't don't have a place to yeah. go to I, access whether I or not. I honestly that's was um, not expecting the reaction that I got when I presented this. I mean, we put a lot of time and thought into how this was going to sure. go, and I didn't um, think that it was going to have that kind of reaction. I yeah, I was. And did they understand? Because I think the people that came were people who owned properties. They weren't necessarily the neighbors. They were the owners right. that were. And w did they understand how minimal what what we were suggesting no. that they? No, they thought that we were over pretty, pretty restrictive. They thought with the minimal stuff we were doing, they thought it was over restrictive. Yeah. So next meeting, we need to be there to talk to them about it. When well, we, well, next time we we'll, consider we'll, it. Yeah, we have, to, we have to bring it back to our table, yeah. make the changes that you guys want to make, and yeah. then when we do bring it to council, as many of you that can make yeah. that meeting would be good. All right, Denise, so. were you suggesting differentiating on the base of, of whether you reside at that property or in that home? Uh -huh. Because that that's, really that was does, a big, I think that's a significant it didn't it didn't cover everybody but it definitely would would cover some of the people yeah, i think there's just about. there's some legal but, they, deals, some but you know the have, thing that that versus not the thing that that doesn't cover is for people in the neighborhood to know because you're bringing in a transient population mm -hmm. and to let the neighbors know this is happening if i had children i would want to know that you know here and here that a transient population would be coming in just so that you know i i if i saw those people i wouldn't necessarily be worrying or maybe that i would <laughs> but you would know well, and, yes you know, but i would know yeah and we were and what i tried to reiterate to the people that were present for this was that we really don't care planning commission doesn't care if it's three months or six months or something, we that's why they changed it to under 30 days. 30 days or under. I mean, we not you know the person that comes in and rents out for three months because they're doing a some sort of teaching thing. You know, yep. we, those we didn't really care about that. We wanted. Yeah, we're to talking really, about that's true. The, yeah, the turn. We're talking the, about the the a safety issue and a knowing your neighbors and knowing who's you know yeah. And that you're actually bringing a business into a residential neighborhood. Yeah. But they were more concerned about we were restricting the ability to, to make money. To make money. And that was not the intent. Yeah. They live in residential areas. That's, that's okay. <laughs> yeah, so we'll, we'll talk about that. We need to more. figure it out. And maybe yeah. Judith can come to our next meeting and talk about that because yeah. she was part of that discussion. Yeah. I mean, are they really talking about? Did short-term rentals though the like a weekend or a week that's what they were talking about and they were they were concerned that we were limiting that yes yes yes, yes. Right. yes. They were limiting that by asking i guess we for them to have insurance to give a contact for the police Emergency. and then the uh so you have to parking yeah yeah they have to that it was mm -hmm. And I, and I had stated this at the last meeting, but there's a misperception about conditional use, what it means to have a conditional yeah, use. Yeah. You are assigning conditions that make the use most palatable within that neighborhood, not that you're saying no. you're never going to be able to do this. And so there was that misperception yeah. and then the fact that because our code is complaint driven, there's this assumption that like, well, don't regulate it then. And if someone complains, we'll deal with it then. And again, your job is to avert those very situations, which yeah. is why I thought it was pretty paramount that you folks be, be there yeah. um, when that discussion comes up. So anyway, so we still have lots of work to do on short-term rentals, I guess, apparently. And, okay. um, <laughs> I'm just starting from scratch. Well, perhaps. I don't think so. <laughs> um, Denise, you have some other items for agenda um, planning? Other things on, uh, for agenda planning. Oh, I don't know if we're going to get all the same. Uh, there's a thing that came up in the code um, regarding the size of the accessory structure in relationship to the primary uh, in the definition how I have been uh, uh, calculating that is the same way that I've calculated lot coverage and the definition is different um, and so I think we need to talk about that 
a little bit more. Um, in, in 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 a nutshell, it's it's that I should I should be calculating all floors of the house. Oh, oh not the okay. surface area. Yeah. And not just lot coverage. Yeah. Uh, and it, but that's how you calculate for lot coverage. And so then that brings up the question of okay, then uh, as we have re let go of the minimum requirements, then technically by not doing it this other way, which well, the way I've been doing it has worked well. I mean, I really, literally had just one thing that came up that um, brought this really forward. It are you could can you theoretically then have this small little home and this huge accessory structure in comparison and is that something that we want to do you know mm. i think that the intent of the code was to try to keep it relatively smaller mm -hmm. than the other structure but that's not and mm -hmm. and i could be wrong i mean maybe i mean other people feel that it should be all fours um I, you know what I, the information that i get from uh green county that i rely on is footprints and i don't i don't know how Mm. Okay. Anyway, so we got to talk about that. I'll talk about that. Uh, Glass Farm Report. Chris or Buka wanted us to uh, everyone to get a copy of that and maybe just put it on the uh, agenda for if there's anybody, any, if it's just for informational purposes or if you want to. I think we as Planning Commission should read the document and yes. talk about it. Yep. And then uh, we mentioned that uh, noise letter. Uh, I. You know, I think we've already agreed that I'll come. I can come back to you, or I can put it on the agenda if it needs to be for the next one, uh, based on how it's going with at the staff level. Um, Thank you. That should go right to council, I think. Yeah, and then uh, then there was another thing. BZA was requesting that we look at the heights of accessory structures. Okay. Uh, so, and so this is that the same as the size of an A. It's different. That was a different issue. Well, can we say a size and height? Yeah. Yeah, we different. could talk about it at the same time. Yeah, well, but we'll just maybe put that on there too. Uh, yeah. If we get, whether we get to it or not, I don't know. Um, and then finally, you have your vice chair nomination. Have one. Vice chair nomination. Vice chair election. Um, Denise yeah. did, did, <laughs> and, and, and Judy, at, at the council meeting, uh, did we have a little little discussion on the? Um, housing survey did you do that, that time? yeah a and, very brief and Marianne right. is bringing that is bringing up for a one-page update to this next meeting um, at the next council she, meeting. yeah so council yeah. is kind of taking up that issue and is this the housing, That's assessment? The housing assessment okay because so, I know we have talked about it in the they need our assistance they'll let us know great Okay, if there's no other discussion, I've got a motion to adjourn, please. So move. Second. Second. Vice chair? No. Oh, we'll don't do we, it. Why don't we right. nominate the vice well, chair? Then we can move on the and then we vote next meeting. Okay, let's leave the meeting open and do that. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, I'll nominate Susan Smiles <laughs> as vice chair. I second that. <laughs> Seconded or broken? Mm -hmm. Would you like to? Uh, okay, yes, do you want to call on that one? I would if you really don't want to. You know what you can do is Susan can be chair, you can be vice chair. <laughs> no, we've already voted you to be chair. <laughs> well, go, go, go. You, is there another nomination? I mean, you can go ahead. And you well, it have. sounds like maybe Rose is interested. And so, um, could I withdraw my name and submit Rose's? I don't think you put your name in. I don't yeah, I don't you think can you do that. That. <laughs> You can yeah, say, you can Truman that. Askin, or, or Sherman Askin say, you can nominate you will Rose. not serve. <laughs> yeah, nominate Rose. I will not serve. <laughs> Are you going to nominate Rose? Yes, I will nominate Rose. Is there oh. a second? Second. Okay. So it's a heated race. <laughs> All right, and it just sits there. It sits there. And you will vote on those vote. two candidates at your next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Yes, uh, now do we have a motion to adjourn, please? I move to adjourn. Second. Second. All in favor? I got less. Aye. 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 So we're not voting till next time. Right. Correct. But we're only voting on rows, correct? correct? No, we're going yeah. both of you. Oh. It's a horse race. So campaign. <laughs> you guys are tough.